back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kaui Lucas. And diving into last week's um, Friday's uh, announcement by the Department of the Interior with regard to the final rules, I have Leon Siu, um, who many know as a composer and musician, but under all of that, or in addition to all of that, he is a very knowledgeable and seasoned um, activist and Hawaiian national. Yes. And this, <laughs> this is such a crazy, um, uh, convoluted story. Very hard mm -hmm. for people who don't spend a lot of time following this. My first show here yes. uh, a year ago was when the Department of Interior made the announcement about this. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's a year later, and they've made the final rule. Right. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> it, it almost it means that they've run out of options. This is the last thing that they're trying. Now, uh, a little bit of background, of course, the United States is having, a, uh, is having to do something to try to quash the idea that Hawaii is still a sovereign independent kingdom, an uh, independent nation. And so back uh, 2000, um, they uh, actually introduced the Akaka Bill, or uh, Senator Akaka introduced it, he and uh, Senator Inouye. And um, they were pushing at that time for this federal rec federally recognized government-to-government -government relationship. And they had, it was worded in all kinds of ways, but basically that's what it was. And, and the idea is to create uh, or to put all Hawaiians into a tribal uh, identity and, and then call, give that tribe a name and then give it a political posi position as an, an Indian tribe within the tribal framework of the United States within the American Indian um, laws and the American Indian system. Which has worked so well. <laughs> yes. And to which every Native American I talked to said, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to get out. <laughs> but anyway, so this is a top-down sort of a dictated uh, solution because in two, 1993 the U.S. apologized for the wrong that they committed in assisting with the overthrow of our, our nation, actually the, 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 the deposing of our queen and the taking over of our, our sovereignty. Um, they didn't actually take our sovereignty, but basically that's what they pretended to do. And the fake annexation and the fake statehood and all those type of things. But then they're realizing that they forgot to really close the barn door because they, they don't have title to the lands. And this was the issue that was starting to crop up even more. And so they decided, and I, I'm just surmising how they were thinking, but this is, the idea was to try to um, uh, finish off the attempted theft of our nation by having the Native Hawaiians cooperate by agreeing that they were part of the United States. Now, how, would, how does agreeing to be part of the United States change the, the land title issues? Um, Technically, it doesn't, but if a Native Hawaiian says, um, I am a Native American Indian or Hawaiian in American Indian, whatever tribal thing that they, then they fall, he falls into the federal rules. He submitted himself into federal rules. And the federal rules actually, when they recognize Native Americans in all of the different tribes, they no longer are land owners. Now, every, every Hawaiian actually has a claim uh, to the lands of Hawaii. It's, it's an undivided interest. In all of the lands? In all the lands. Uh -huh. and, uh, Are these the ceded lands or is this something different? It, it, this is something different. This okay. is all the lands. But, uh, but then there's the ceded lands, so-called so ceded lands, which are really crown lands. Um, and it, without going into a lot of details, uh, basically Hawaii, Hawaiian lands were put under private ownership during, uh, by Kamehameha III. Uh, they're in the Great Mahele, and they're, they're called different things, but basically it's private ownership of, and all of the lands, every Hawaiian has a one-third interest in all the lands. Every uh, Hawaiian every, or every kingdom of the whole, every, um, every national, Hawaiian national? Well, you know, I don't know that part, but at the time it was basically Hawaiian descendants or uh, Hawaiian-blooded 
Okay. Has, has so a claim. But, okay. I, but I don't know how, to, how that plays out now. But the thing is, is, so the United States realized that they haven't actually, they cannot prove a number of things, but one of the thing, most vital things is title to this land. Um, they just assume the title. And there's been a number of challenges where they've come really close to having that fraud exposed. Um, and uh, so in order to try to make sure that, that uh, they could claim these lands, they devised this, this system. Now, the reason they did that, of course, was to, to try to prevent the return of the Hawaiian kingdom, that is, the reinstatement of the lawful Hawaiian kingdom government, which, as we have talked about before, I'm sure with Keanu and others, that, uh, that's Dr. Tsai, um, that, that, um, that the Hawaiian kingdom was never exterminated, it was never uh, extinguished. And so um, it still is here. And all it really needs is for its people to reclaim their membership or their citizenship or their nationality in that kingdom. And so by doing so, we actually reinforce and, and re, uh, uh, restart our nation. So um, the, the idea of the government to government is to substitute, instead of having a, a sovereign nation arise, is to substitute this Indian tribal nation as a means to say that we have now resolved the situation of the unlawful overthrow of the One Kingdom. And, and to try to get as many Hawaiians to sign on to that. Early on, you know, during the Kaui Noa um, uh, registration. Uh, that was in the so, 90s? No, no, it was in, in the 80s. No, 2004, Kauinoa. 5, 6, somewhere around there. Um, and then, of course, the Kanai Uluvalu recent uh, role. All of these roles were designed in order to get people to sign up to say that they're native to the United States, whether they're indigenous people of the United States, uh, although they're Hawaiian born. So um, uh, so that was the plot, and that's what we've been fighting for years and years. In Congress, the Akaka bill was the, the one that was being pushed, and um, for 12 years, uh, that was tr they tried to, to push that off, but Congress really utterly rejected it. Uh, it came close a few times, but eventually, uh, this, the Congress caught on to what was going on and basically... In what sense? What, which do you think were the most um, pressing uh, reasons that it uh, wasn't... The, the issue became a constitutional issue. That, that is, can the United States create a native Hawaiian tribe where there was none before? You cannot just create something and call it this and then, and then worse yet, then encompass it into this tribal situation. So. Uh, most of the people who were opposed to it uh, began to oppose it, or oppose it on a constitutional level. Um, and then, so after, uh, coincidentally, uh, well, Senator Akaka uh, was designated that he was going to retire at a certain time, and a week before he retired, Senator Inouye passed away. So suddenly, the two major proponents of this bill, although the bill by that time had pretty much languished for a few years. It wasn't going anywhere. But now the main proponents were gone, and um, so th they were left with nothing else. So the focus for those in Hawaii who were pushing for this federal recognition for their own purposes, different purposes than the United States was. But uh, then they appealed to the administration, to uh, Barack Obama, to then help them to get this deed done through the Department of the Interior. Actually, they were looking first for a presidential uh, executive order uh, directly from President Obama, but I don't think that was forthcoming because that was even more of an egregious violation of constitutional powers. And so they, they decided they, they would try the Department of the Interior, which is the, the department that is in charge of all the other Native American uh, tribes. So the mechanism that the Department of the Interior is using is this sort of a complicated list of things that ha has to happen. That's right, yes. So yeah. in order for them to do so, they realize they, they don't have the authority or the rules in place to, to do this. So then they propose these rules, of which they then try to uh, get the public input from here to 2014. And they were uh, just blasted. Out of, out of the water, for, and they, it was very difficult uh, for them at that point to justify moving forward. However, 
However, they created a way in which they then accepted written testimonies. Uh, and many of those written testimonies were identical postcards, thousands of them, identical postcards saying that they were for federal recognition. So do we, do we have any knowledge about uh, who, who was responsible for the printing those postcards that were then? Uh, you'd have to ask other people who actually looked into okay. it more. Better. So I, I think it's uh -huh. worth mentioning that they came here. This was the first time that the United States federally came to Hawaii mm -hmm. and they went to six islands, I believe, and had mm -hmm. listening sessions. I went to the first one at the Capitol, mm -hmm. which was amazing. Yes. Um, and the opposition was The opposition so was, was overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And in each place they went, people stood in line for hours to mm -hmm. give se testimony. Right, and only a few hundred could could give, uh, and only all, for two, two minutes, right. and yet they did. Yes. Um, so the um, so in spite of this overwhelming um, that somehow doesn't show up. Yes. Because. Uh, because they don't want it to show up. <laughs> because it was too. Uh, it, it exposed the fact that the people themselves didn't want. Now actually, that was the second set of hearings. There was another one in 1999 in preparation for the Akaka Bill. And they ran into the same buzzsaw back then, which is why they never... The Hawaiian did. Sovereignty Elections Council. Well, that's something slightly different. Okay. Yeah, yeah but, but there was a... Uh, uh, before Senator Akaka introduced his bill in Congress, he came to test the waters. And so they said, well, how about we put this bill, saying you're, you're a Native American tribe, and he ran into a huge bus saw, just like we saw in 2014. Okay, so they said, so if, said it no. was, if, so, if, so if it was oral testimony, it doesn't count. Mm -hmm. We're only going to count the written testimony, yes. which happened to be these um, which, which mysteriously was, which was a similar... rule made later, you know, after, after, after the fact. The fact yes. yes, okay. Yes, okay. and yes, mysteriously similar written or uh, emailed, printed, yeah. printed uh, uh, testimonies. testimonies. Okay. Um, and anyway, so... What happened was that uh, they used, uh, they ba basically said, oh, we have a justification to have this rule change. Um, and then all they needed then was for Senator, uh, for President Obama to uh, then approve that they could to make this rule change. And that's what President Obama did uh, a so couple he, of weeks ago. Uh, he approved the rule change to? To allow the Department of the Interior to accept a proposal for a uh, federally recognized tribe if the people of Hawaii sent them such a proposal. Okay, and that hasn't happened yet. That hasn't happened. Okay, Leon, we're gonna take a, a mm -hmm. short break and come right back okay. and talk about what's happening elsewhere. All right. Hi, my name is Aaron Wills. You are watching thinktechhawaii.com. I am the host of the show Rehabilitation Coming Soon. You can catch us live on thinktechhawaii.com at 11 a.m. on Tuesdays. I will see you there. Hi, I'm Stacy Hayashi with the Think Tech Hawaii show, Stacy to the Rescue, highlighting some of Hawaii's issues. You can catch it at Think Tech Hawaii on Mondays at 11 a.m. Aloha. See you then. Aloha. My name is John Waihe, and I actually had a small part to do with what's happening today. Served actually in public office. But if you don't already know that, here's a chance to learn more about what's happening in our state by joining me for Talk Story with John Waihe every other Monday. Thank you, and I look forward to your seeing us in the future. Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kawi Lucas, and with me today is Leon Siu, Hawaiian national, and it's so good to have you here. You're very good at um, digesting this complicated network mm -hmm. of legal gamesmanship. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so when we, we last left, you were explaining how this recent ruling by the Department of the Interior will acknowledge a Native Hawaiian government if we... One was presented. One was presented. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now what's yes. the next step? Okay. So to, to me, 
it's, it's over. Uh, that that uh, there's not going to be a Native Hawaiian government that's presented that will, that will um, meet the criteria that the Department of the uh, Interior is looking for. The recent Na'i Puni document that was uh, issued doesn't come close to meeting the criteria of forming a nation. Oh, I can't tell you how and, I and relieved it, it, I am to hear that. And on top of that, it's not been ratified. Right. And on top of that, it can't be ratified because they don't have a voter base to ratify it because it's been proven that the voter uh, list that they had is, is fraudulent, that there's, they, they cannot certify that list. Great. So we can dispel so, that myth. Right. Okay. But they're going to try to push anyway. The way I, I actually portray it is that, <laughs> you know, the game of football, there's this, this play called a Hail Mary pass. And what it is is a last desperate toss. They toss the football into the end zone, hoping one of their guys will catch it and they'll have a touchdown and they'll win the game. And this is what this is. They're, they're throwing the ball all the way into the end zone, hoping somebody on this side, uh, on their side, will catch it and then they will win the, win, uh, win the game. Of course, it's a gamble. It's a, it's a desperate gamble because most of the time it fails. And then many of the times, the opposition intercepts the pass and running back across for a touchdown. <laughs> you know, so this is what I'm proposing, is that we just keep our heads up and watch. Um, we, this is the pass. We need to grab that, what the, what the United States is offering, and then run it the other direction. In other words, they're saying they're doing this for a government-to-government -government relationship, to restore a government-to-government -government relationship. We know that the, the relationship that they're talking about is the U.S. federal government with a subservient tribal government. But what if instead of the subservient tribal government, the one that catches that ball, is the Hawaiian Kingdom? And the Hawaiian Kingdom says, okay, let's, here's our government-to-government -government relation. We're a government, you're a government, and we have treaties that prove that, and so let's talk, and let's deal with this. So, so this is what I'm saying. They're giving us an opportunity because they basically said they want a government-to-government -government relationship. They didn't specify what kind of government, and so, <laughs> so we, we take over. So I remember reading last year uh, that, that uh, ruling that came out was about 79 pages. This new one, um, and yeah. there was a great essay written by Noe Goodyear Kaupua, mm -hmm. and um, I, I think at some point uh, that that will appear on the bottom of the screen, and, and people can look at that. Uh, it's a great essay, uh, and she's got the links to the original document, which mm -hmm. uh, of that was uh, announced last week, <coughs> mm -hmm. which is 172 pages. Yes. So we've, we've, we've added a lot of pages of, of stuff. Yes. And I mention the pages because it is in that stuff that often um, the, the, the sand traps are. Right. So. But, yes, yes. However, um, much of, or a good part of, part of that document is trying to justify that the Department of the Interior has the authority to do something like this. And that's where, so, so a point that the Congress is taking issue with right now. There is a bill moving through Congress that actually is challenging, or not challenging, it's claiming that, that the DO, Department of the Interior is overstepping its boundaries. Because, uh, so what the bill does is it reserves the right, the constitutional right, um, for the Congress to make the decision regarding federal recognition of any Indian tribe. Who is, who is putting that forth? A representative bishop from Utah. Uh, and the bill was introduced last October. It had a hearing, a very fiery hearing in December. And then it made it out of committee, I believe, about around the same time that the DOI made their announcement, about two, three weeks ago. Uh, well, I guess the DOI announcement was about two weeks ago. But it, so around the same time, this bill made it out of committee and is now on the floor of the House. So, uh, meaning, meaning it can move forward. On the floor of the House. Mm -hmm. So, how has uh, the Hawaii State, uh, our elected officials, reacted to this? Do well, you know? I don't know. Okay. They, because I don't know they're even aware of it yet. Ah, okay. <laughs> So it's out of committee. It's going to come up for a vote. Do you happen to know when? I don't know when. Okay. Yeah. So I'll we try can look at out. this out. But, the, but what, the, what this does is it helps, to, it muddies the water for the DOI. The DOI cannot go ahead and do this until the, well, the, the Congress is basically challenging the DOI's authority. 
to do this. So that's going to take a while to sort out. And uh, it most likely won't sort out before President Obama leaves office, which is one of the target dates they're trying to use. So anyway. So elsewhere in the world. Yes. So meanwhile, uh, well, what's important when I talk about intercepting this Hail Mary pass yes. is that uh, it's really important at this point that the Hawaiian nationals and the, the, those that identify themselves as, as those who belong to the Hawaiian kingdom um, or even just from a national movement for, the, for Hawaiian independence, that we uh, present a cohesive, strong voice uh, of our desire for a political uh, uh, Sovereignty. So sovereignty, right. <laughs> Political sovereignty, that's good. Um, uh, on, on the international scene, because uh, I've been working years in the international scene and they're prepared now to accept something like that. That is, they're, it's, they're a receptive um, uh, audience out there for us to... Well, who exactly can you tell us? Well, um, it's most, most of the members of the General Assembly. Uh, when I say most, it's because in, in, um, uh, in theory, not in theory, in uh, the principle is that, um, that they all want to see uh, situations like ours uh, solved or resolved uh, in a peaceful way. Um, and so since we already have been a nation, in con we are a nation continuity, um, just the presentation of a, of a strong voice and a unified voice, or, or let's say a cohesive, doesn't have to be unified, but a cohesive voice saying that Hawaii needs to be an independent country once again, will bring out support from a lot of these people. And I can't really name them specifically, uh, but I've been working for years with a number of them who basically said, okay, we understand your situation, and um, but you need to then precipitate a situ uh, a an action in which we can then join in. Um, but it has to be something we can join in peacefully as well. You know, we don't want so to come into. So this is the United Nations. The United Nations. Okay, and mm -hmm. there's um uh, there was a designation. There was a list. Yes. And um, that list existed until sh uh, uh, Hawaii was on that list until mm -hmm. a list of. Non-self-governing uh, territories. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so these were all the places that were still, uh, to use the vernacular, colonized. Right. So Hawaii was on that list of mm -hmm. colonized nations until shortly before statehood. Is that right? In the, the 50s? It was statehood that, that changed it. Yes. Ah. Um, because uh, to be on that decolonized list, well, first of all, we didn't belong on that list. But nevertheless, we were on, on the list. And in order to get off that list, you had, you, you were, the purpose of that list was to um, assist countries that were trying to uh, exercise their right to self-determination, uh, assist them to make a, a choice. And the choices that you had was to remain as a territory of the administrative country uh, or to become um, a state of the administrative country country or become absorbed into that country or become an independent state. And so the idea of the United Nations had was that we want to make sure that the people had, would make a, a, a choice, an informed choice about what they wanted to do. And so any one of those choices could be accepted as long as it was made in a free informed consent. You know? And so, um, but the U.S. then actually acted to activate this, this decolonization process, but they withheld two of the choices that, that, that we had, and well, particularly the choice for independence, uh, and with the implication that there was only one actually choice, actual choice on the ballot, which was for statehood, which meant if you didn't vote for that, then you would have fallen back on the second choice, which was remain a territory, but they never mentioned independence. And that's where the flaw is in their referendum. And that's where the weak point is. Uh, that's the point that we can make with the United Nations if we can get this issue raised again before them, that the United Nations approved um, the report of the referendum uh, without 
that basically they were lied to. They were given false information by the U.S. and they acted upon false information by removing Hawaii from that list. But like I said, we didn't belong in that list anyway. But what we would like to do is to use this opportunity of examining what happened in 1959 uh, to destabilize and, and to actually uh, discredit the United States claim that there was a, a lawful plebiscite held. Once we can discredit that claim, the U UN will not, no longer recognize the United States uh, claim of sovereignty over the Hawaiian Islands. We, we come forward and we say we're, we're still a sovereign nation and we deal with it that way. So we, we bypass the whole decolonization process. Can you, is it possible to explain why Hawaii should not have been on that list? You've mentioned it. Twice. Yes, because we were, we were not a territory of the United States. And so the, you know, ah. you know, we, the annexation was illegal and it was a fraudulent annexation. We were actually an occupied territory, but being presented to the UN as if we were under the territorial control of the United States. So Leon, it's always amazing that um, the show, we have a minute left. Yeah, okay. So I am going to let you um, use that to the best. Okay, um, so the situation we're in right now is that the Hail Mary Pass has been, has been tossed. We need to be prepared to take it and run it back across the goal line. Um, and at the same time, we have to also be aware that there may be some people out there ready to catch that Hail Mary pass. So we, we don't want to let down our vigilance and make sure that we bat that ball down or we can intercept it and prevent the other side, the federal recognition people, from actually catching that ball and running with it. And I believe we can do that because they're, they're very weak at this point. But we, who knows? The other thing about the United States is that they have a propensity for cheating. <laughs> so, I mean, they're making up the rules as uh, they go along, as we can just see. Yeah. So, Written so. Testimony, not oral testimony, oral testimony after we've taken right, two months worth of oral right, testimony. Yeah. So, so there's always a chance that they're going to cheat again there with that Hail Mary pass and say, our interception was ruled out illegal or whatever. Anyway, just I don't want to carry the metaphor too far. But we're. You have made a football out. fan out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a football fan. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank and you. Um, I hope you will come back and talk with me some more about okay. this. Okay, I will do that. Okay, thank you very much. Aloha.